Hi. Say hi to the camera. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Welcome back to Lunch Break Heroes as we start our series on Castle Ravenloft. Today we're going to be talking about the NPCs that you can find inside the castle living with Strahd. This is going to be the staff, the consorts, and the other freeloaders that are just kind of milling about. We're going to be adding some background, some additional motivations, and interactions to make things interesting for your characters. We're going to be adding some, well, I, I would normally say life but most of them are already kind of dead. First up is the consorts. These are the brides that Strahd has taken on. They're more than just the nameless vampires that you can endlessly throw at your players. They have goals and personality and different strategies that they'll use to take on your party. Now, they don't have all of this in the module. They're just nameless, mindless beasts there, but you know, this is what you're here for. First, let's talk about Ludmila Vilasevic. She's the oldest of Strahd's active brides, and the smartest. She drew Strahd's attention with her keen mind, very much like his own. She's scientific and analytical in her nature, and she is one hell of a wizard. She's no match for Strahd in terms of magical power, but she can really hold her own against basically anything in Barovia. In her dealings with others, Ludmila is cold and aloof, almost to a fault. She's almost robotic in her mannerisms. But behind that cold exterior is a fiery passion that she diverts into her studies of the natural and the magical world. If you remember from my Zelenka Pass Guide, Ludmila can be encountered there if you ever try to break her little science experiment out of his prison. When she's not studying him or dissecting other Barovians or frogs or whatever it is she does on her spare time, she's helping to run the entirety of Castle Ravenloft, and she does that with the help of Rahadin. Rahadin, who we'll talk about in a little bit, is basically the closest thing that Lumila has to a friend. The two are devoted to each other almost absolutely. The only thing that they are devoted to more is Strahd himself. If Rahadin is slain while Lumila lives, Ludmila is going to track down your party, or whoever killed Rahadin, ruthlessly and endlessly. Next up on the consort list is Anastrasia Karolova. As a former noblewoman from Velaki, she's the proudest of Strahd's consorts. She's extremely jealous of his infatuation with Tatiana and his current infatuation with Irina. She wants Irina dead and as you may remember from my Velaki video, Anastrasia is the architect behind the Feast of St. Andrew, the massacre in Velaki. If Ludmila is the magical archetype of the consort group, then Anastrasia is the martial archetype. She favors strength and brute force over everything else, and when she's dealing with others, she just really likes to beat the crap out of them. It's just what she does. Out of all the consorts, Anastrasia is the most devoted to Strahd. If there's ever a combat situation where Anastrasia is faced with going up against the party to protect her master, well, she's going to fight to the death. She will not withdraw tactically unless commanded to do so. Next up is Volenta Popovsky. She's the youngest of Strahd's female consorts and originally a street urchin from the village of Barovia. She spent her youth hiding in the shadows and stealing to survive. She's basically the rogue archetype of the group. She rounds it out like that. Now, what she is now is basically the protector of Castle Ravenloft. All of those traps and other little hidden things that your party might run into, those are her fault. Valenta is a stealthy assassin, and if your party is within the walls of Castle Ravenloft, you can be assured that she knows where they're at and she's on their trail. If they're there at the invitation of Strahd, well, she's not going to attack first, but she's still going to trail them and make sure they're not getting up to anything that they shouldn't be. She'll probably even try to goad them into a fight so that she can, you know, try to kill them, or at the very least, lure them into one of her handy-dandy homemade traps. Next up, we have Escher von Preschlow, the pretty boy vampire that you can find lounging on the couch up in one of the tall castle towers. Now, most people don't make a whole lot of Escher, but we're going to turn him into something a bit more interesting and a lot more helpful. You see, Escher used to be a bard in a previous adventuring party that had come in to kill Strahd. They obviously failed, and after Strahd was done slaughtering the rest of Escher's companions, he decided to turn Escher. 
he had a great wit, and he was good with a loot, so, eh, why not? Let's keep him around. But that's what Escher used to be at this point. He was a bard. He was an adventurer like your party. As such, they have a lot in common, not least of which is a desire to get the hell out of Barovia. Escher's clever enough to be outwardly obedient to Strahd, but inside, he is anything but. He wants to get out, he wants to escape, and if there's any chance he could do it without getting himself locked up into the catacombs for all of eternity, he's gonna do it. And your party fits the bill. As he tends to distance himself from the other consorts, your party has an opportunity to get a lot of alone time with Escher. Escher's a great information dump about where things are in the castle. Although he can't act against Strahd directly, he can provide information that would help the party, such as where an item of power would be if it's located within the castle. If the Sun Sword is, say, in the Bone Room, Escher totally knows about it and he's willing to spill the beans. That does it for the consorts, so let's talk about the staff of Castle Ravenloft. First up is Rahadin von Zarevich, the Dusk Elf servant to Strahd von Zarevich himself. Rahadin used to serve King Barov way back in the day. When the king was done with the Dusk Elf, he passed him off to his son. Now, Rahadin's fealty is flawless, and he serves Strahd just as he served King Barov. And he continues to serve Strahd in Unlife, just as he did when Strahd was a living, breathing man. Rahadin is basically the Alfred to Strahd's Batman. He does basically everything for Strahd except for run the day-to-day -day operations of the castle. That falls to Ludmila at this point. What Rahadin does beyond just helping Strahd and being a, you know, what passes as a friend to a vampire lord, he acts as an enforcer throughout Barovia, which is why your party will probably encounter him more often than the Count himself. Rahadin goes out and does the dirty work. If somebody needs to be kidnapped, Rahadin does it. If somebody needs to be murdered in their sleep, Rahadin does it. If somebody needs to be shaken down, you get the point. Rahadin does basically everything for Strahd. Next up, we have Helga Ruvak. She was once a cobbler's daughter from the village of Barovia, and she caught Strahd's attention with her auburn hair and her striking resemblance to Tatiana. He imagined her to be one of Tatiana's reincarnations. She turned out not to be, and Strahd was a little bit disappointed, to say the least. He was going to destroy her or lock her up in the catacombs down below, but his hand was stayed by Ludmila, who figured they could use a maid. These days, Helga endures verbal and physical abuse from Ludmila and Anastasia while she does the bare minimum to keep from being locked up in the catacombs down below. She can still be encountered in her area, just as in the module, and she'll still try to trick the party into rescuing her. She'll betray them, of course, in hopes of regaining Strahd's favor and becoming a favored consort once again. It's not gonna work, but she doesn't know that. Next up, we have Cyrus Bellevue. Not much has changed with his character, except for the fact that he's now a spy for the abbot over in Kresk. He's just one of a long line of Bellevue mongrel folk that has been sent to the castle to be an assistant slash spy. And all of them have been utterly terrible at their spying job. Cyrus keeps a poorly hidden journal locked away in a desk that is now in his room. It's got all sorts of scrawled notes and observations that he occasionally sends back to the abbot via trained bat. Kind of like a carrier pigeon, but more, you know, leathery. Strahd and Rahadin, of course, know all about Cyrus's spying duties, and I imagine they get a bit of a chuckle out of it now and then every time Cyrus scurries off to write a new note. There's nothing that he's written that they haven't read. Next up, we have Leif Leipzig, the devoted accountant to Strahd von Zarevich. He's been doing Strahd's taxes and tallying up the treasury and whatnot for a lot longer than you might think. Contrary to the module, Leif hasn't been there just his entire life. He's been there for way more than that. 
Leif began working as an accountant in Castle Ravenloft generations ago. He started basically after Strahd became a vampire. Now, he was utterly devoted to the job, so much so that one day in his waning years, he got up from bed to go to work and just kind of left his body behind. He had died and he continues his work as a ghost. We've given him kind of the Professor Ben's treatment from Harry Potter. One thing hasn't changed, and that's Leaf's frustration with the fact that Strahd hasn't been entirely on the up and up with all of the financials. He really wants to tally up all the treasury. If he's not outright attacked by the characters, Leaf is going to assume that they're employees of Strahd. He's going to impatiently demand that they help him find the rest of the money so that he can get it all down on his ledgers. Now, if asked where it is, he doesn't quite know but he thinks that it might be on one of the upper floors. That's going to help clue your party into the fact that the treasury is hidden somewhere up above. All right, now let's talk about some of the freeloaders. First up, we have Gertruda. Now, she ended up being one of my favorite characters in the module, which surprised me. Gertruda is, as written, a 16-year-old girl that had been kept captive in her bedroom by her mother, Mad Mary. She, of course, went to the castle, having been raised on fairy tales, that was the natural place to go, and befriended Strahd, and here she sits on a bed in Strahd's bedroom, which is kind of a creepy place to find her. We're going to change up Gertrude's history a little bit. Now, the module tells us that Mad Mary is called Mad Mary because she's crying all the time over her lost daughter. I don't really buy that. For one, Gertrude's only been gone a week. That's not really a lot of time to get a nickname like that. And plus, crying over a lost child is probably a pretty natural reaction, even in Barovia. So, Mad Mary isn't called Mad Mary because of that. She's called Mad Mary because everybody knows that she keeps her daughter locked away, and they don't do anything about it. Now, as I said, Gertruda is described as a 16-year-old girl. What we're going to do is age her up by about 12 to 14 years. So she's now 28 to 30 years old. Why are we doing this? For a few reasons. One, it makes Strahd not look like a pedophile. Two, it makes Mad Mary's actions all the more heinous. She didn't just keep her daughter locked away for 16 years, she did it for three freaking decades. And additionally, when the party is expecting to find a young girl in the bedroom, they're finding a fully grown woman. So that's a bit of a shock. The details of Gertruda's escape are entirely up to you. Maybe her mother passed out from dream pastries. Check out the video here. Or maybe she just busted out the window. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that she eventually made her way to the local tavern where she got the scoop on her mother's nickname. And then she figured out that everybody knew about her plight and they were completely unwilling to help her. And you know what? That made her really, really mad. At that point, Gertruda continues along her written course of going to Castle Ravenloft and getting into Strahd's good graces. At some point, she makes a request of him. She wants her mother taken captive and held in the castle dungeons to get a little taste of her own medicine. And being the kind of guy that encourages people's darkest and worst behaviors, Strahd acquiesced. He sent Rahadan and a few vampire spawn out to capture Mad Mary and brought her right back. You can find her in the same cell that Emil used to be in before we moved him to Zelenka Pass, and that's where she stays. That's where your party can find her. Gertruda has been going down to Mad Mary's cell almost daily to bring her some stale bread and some water, and she alternates between hurling abuses at her mother and seeking maternal comfort. It's a really weird relationship. 